This is a historical, polemical, religious documentary series. I want you to prayerfully consider, as you listen to these documentaries, the intent of anti-Mormons who claim to be Christians believing in Christ. Their intent, their evil intent to vilify and demonize the LDS church and its people. Their disinformation tactics, the methods that they use, which are like what the early anti-Christians did and what communist atheists use against all religions, comes out in the different tactics that they use to vilify. So in this documentary, the Christian is attempting to bombard me with a bunch of questions and it becomes clear as he goes along that his intent seems to be to find some sort of comment made from me that he could use and take apart and demonize and disinformationize with the, the tactics that are commonly used by anti-Mormon Christians. So he's not interested in answering any questions back because he always would come back with, that's a loaded question. He's interested in trying to manipulate an answer, which he can thus use to demonize the LDS faith with, as if my comments were some kind of a official representations of the church when they are not. So as you watch this dialogue, this exchange, put your discerning spirit gifts into play and discern the intent, the evil intent, you should be able to feel it as you watch this video, the evil intent of the Christian as he's attempting to bombard people with questions and look for things to make issues out of in order to vilify the LDS church. Because, because that's what a lot of the, these critics outside the Temple Square gates during conference like to do is they, they come with these sources and uh, obscure quotes and that they try to make issues out of or misinterpret them and without uh, considering their historical settings and they're doing this in order to vilify the LDS church or to attempt to uh, freak out uh, different LDS people that maybe not be familiar with the historical background behind a comment or two that maybe a prophet might have made or uh, their twist, the anti mormons twist on what they think and claim the interpretation should be. It's like what the early anti-Christians did with early Christian writings and with what different ones that Christ noted that people were doing when he spoke. They attempted to ask him questions which they could attempt to trap him with or make issues about. And so, as we watch this documentary, this uh, series of documentaries, be aware and put your discerning of spirits. I want you to also be aware of the intent. Discern the spirit behind what uh, this person is attempting to do. And it's going to be a negative one. So we're going to try to bring in the, the spirit, the positive spirit, as we go here with music and uh, other comments. So you can contrast between the two spirits also. Early anti-Christians have been resurrected in the tactics and disinformation vilification methods of modern anti-Mormon Christians and atheists and anti-religious communists. What's your name? My name's Aaron, but do you think deification or theosis okay. to early Christians meant they could be worshipped by other spirit children? Someday. The deification of Christianity was to become a god. Okay, even the, the people that gave us the Nicene Creed taught that. The, the Nicene Creed wasn't biblical, they even admit that. Do you think that early... Okay, let me finish my point. Go ahead. Athanasius and the others that took part in the uh, Nicene Creed taught Christ became a man, so you can learn from a man, 
how to become gods. Why isn't Christianity teaching okay. that part well, of deification? No, answer that question. Well, You're not going to be the one well, to I, I want uh, terms asking to all the defined. questions. I want okay. Terms to be defined. As is well known maybe to members of your audience, uh, there's a famous Mormon couplet attributed to Lorenzo Snow as man is God once was, as God is man may become. There was a similar little phrase that went around the early Christian church, that God became man in order that man might become God. It seems to have served much the same function. So that there was a doctrine of theosis, theopoiesis, divinization or deification taught in the early Christian church. And it's one that, I don't want to say that it's precisely the same thing as what's taught in the LDS church because the, the evidence is a little bit unclear, but it seems suggestively close. For critics, there are some critics, James White is one, for example, who deny that there's any relationship between the doctrine of theosis or deification in the early church and the doctrine as it's taught in the LDS church, I would simply say, isn't it striking that the early Christian fathers taught a doctrine of deification and that the LDS church teaches a doctrine of deification? And isn't it striking by the same token that uh, our critics don't teach a doctrine of deification, that the Latter-day Saints have one, the early Christians had one, but our critics don't have one at all. I think that's, that's quite a striking fact. so I can have a, a constructive conversation okay. with you. Do you think by becoming a god, that meant that they could become such that other spirit children would worship them? You don't find that in, in early Christianity? You don't find the deified being worshipped except for Mary. You find Mary in you know, Catholic traditions. You think that was appropriate? Uh, I, I think that uh, they should have went with what some of the earlier Christian fathers said was that uh, you know, you're know you ranked next below the, the Godhead. You don't take over the Godhead's position. You're not the one that becomes the Most High God, but you're, you're ranked a God below. Okay, but Mormonism does teach that and traditionally at least, okay. that we can become gods such that we are worshipped by their spirit children. Is that not the case? Yes, that is the case. Uh, Bruce Samarkanki in his, uh, what was it, Mananio, can't remember the source, but he basically says the fact that, you know, the eternal cycle of God is that, uh, um, you know, I can't remember exactly how it goes, but it basically that is, it is brought out. That uh, in the eternal cycle of things, uh, those who become gods have spirit children in the afterlife, okay? They have the power to be able to resurrect and create new worlds. And, you know, it's a deification that's way beyond uh, what the early Christians taught because it's, it's a deification way beyond what the early Christians taught because it's a deification that is revealed by modern prophets. Okay, okay so let me ask you, do you believe God the Father could have partook in this in the Mormon version of theosis, do you think he could have been a sinner as well? Well, Christ said, I have not seen anything, you know, Christ said, I do what my... Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, so, okay. Uh, you know, we haven't taken, if an officially doctrine, we haven't taken that to that okay, extreme. they're not being in okay. an official position, do you, believe, do you believe God the Father could have been a sinner? Um, if, if God the Father uh, lived on an earth, okay, uh, if there was, you know, if this has been an ongoing thing of humans, you know, before this time, you know, logically you would have to think that that could be possibly the case. But I don't think, and I don't know if the LDS prophets have 
explored that area in an official way. It'd be just speculation on on anybody's so part. Speculatively speaking, how bad of a sinner do you think God the Father could have been? I only know of a couple things. That okay, well let's let's 